Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about creating art for tattoos in Clip Studio Paint, presented by Brian Sanchez. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. Question and answer session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. The webinar will be recorded. The recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Mario Quinones, myself, Joanna Brower, and Brian Sanchez. M. For those of you who connect with us for the very first time or have never heard about Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your all in one solution for stunning, ready to publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. If you want to interact with us during the webinar, we encourage you to uh, share your Instagram stories. Uh, please tag us as hashtag webinar at Brian underscore Sanchez M at graphicsly at welcome and at Clip Studio official. We'll be sharing your stories. Brian is an artist, art director, muralist, and Colombian tattoo artist. Brian is one of Colombia's most important and internationally renowned urban artists working with murals and tattoos, focusing in topics related to endangered fauna, its awareness, and conservation. With a deep interest in social activities, he has used his work as a transformation tool for vulnerable communities leading the project hashtag El Arte Salvará El Mundo. With his unique tattoo style, Brian has become the first Latin American artist with his own set of inks with the support of Eternal Ink, the two's most important ink company in the world. He has also collaborated with other distinguished brands such as Sailor Jerry, Levi's, Quicksilver, and Skull Candy. So with that, I'll leave you with Brian and his presentation, Creating Art for Tattoos in Clip Studio Paint. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm really happy to be here today, sharing with you a couple of my artistic process. I'm gonna show you how it's gonna be. How's gonna be the process today? I'm gonna I'm gonna prepare. I'm preparing my tattoo for for today, and it's gonna be a frog. So I'm gonna share with you a couple of details and a couple of tips about how I prepare my designs using Cleaver Studio. The first thing I'm gonna I will show you my work. Uh, this is my Instagram. You can see. If I go super fast, please let me know and I will try to go slow. Uh, this is my Instagram. You can see my work here. You can prepare a couple of questions after the, at the end of the webinar. And, and please welcome. So today I'm gonna, I'm gonna work with, with, a, with a frog. Uh, one of the most important things for me about tattooing and part of the process is involve the client in the in the process so this is one of the pictures that the client sent me and especially this one is, is, is some kind of hard because you see it's a lot of black and a lot of even if my speciality is the colors i always trying to find a way to make the tattoo readable so and that's something super important because there's a lot of really, really good artists and new artists that are doing amazing things right now, but they don't really understand that tattooing is different, the skin is different than paper, right? Because the tattoo is gonna age. And that's that's how we, we, we see people, everybody in a lot of really good tattoos and super small small and tiny tattoos that look super perfect in the beginning and they look perfect for, for the picture. But months later, the tattoo is gonna be just a stain because we need to understand how the, how the skin is gonna, is gonna, how the tattoo is gonna age with the skin. So when I'm tattooing, I always try to think that how my, how my tattoo is gonna look in five years 
10 years. So how are gonna make that the tattoo still readable uh, with the with the time? So with this special case, I will try to find a way to make it readable. And with this particular frog, I need to I need to show the the the, the people and the, when the people see the tattoo. I need the people see that this is a tiny tattoo because a tiny frog, right? Because we, if we don't have the context of the, of the picture, we don't, we don't, we don't realize, and we can't imagine how is the real size of the, of the frog. And these frogs are really, really small. They are tiny as a nail. So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you like, this is the first picture. This is the placement that we are going to work. Normally, when I when people send me the application for getting one of my tattoos, this is what I ask. I ask for a couple of reference pictures of what they want and a couple of pictures of the placement that they want to get the tattoo. With that, I can see the, the skin tone, the skin condition. Uh, if, if, if they have something special, I can, I can see and I can ask them before to getting the tattoo and preparing the composition thinking about how it's gonna how's gonna look with if they have any other tattoos close by so this is important this is this is something that i always talk about how important is the client in the process normally people think that okay a tattoo is a picture and gonna we're gonna put a sticker in there and, and that's it and we need to to understand how is the body how's the, how the how the body flows and how the tattoo is gonna flow with the with the with the body. So I have the picture and I have I have the placement. So when I when I start thinking about the the idea that oh I gonna I'm gonna show you a couple of details more. That is something really really important for me to to explain because I see a lot of tattoos that they have the wrong direction. They, they go to the opposite direction and the tattoo looks weird when, when that happens. So normally the idea is like when the people is straight, the tattoo is looking forward, looking, looking straight at as, as the body. So normally I always thinking about how the body flows and making the lines in the, in the correct direction of the, of the, how the tattoo is going to be in the correct direction. So example, I see a lot normally in, and this is a common a common mistake that people when he's putting the tattoo on the skin is like they put it in the in the opposite way especially as example here the forearms people make a i don't know like a, like the frog as example if we put the frog here we put it like this like this way it's opposite and it's looking it's looking it's looking back so it is it's not the, the right thing is like if we're gonna have the tattoo is gonna be here, we need to put the tattoo in the like the 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 face has to be in this direction, right? This is it's supposed to be the has to be in the in this direction. And if it's in the inner part of the forearm, we need to think that the tattoo is coming up from the back, and so this will be the right direction of the of the tattoo it's like a, trying to make a fast sketch but showing you the the right direction of the of the of the image so normally i can i can send this picture after the webinar to to give this this example how is the right direction of the of the tattoo where the tattoo must to must to go okay and when i'm preparing the idea. So he sent me this picture. So I have to look more reference about the, about how's the, as example here, we have the eye is really, really dark. So I need to look for more. Where is the flower? No, sorry. So I research for more, especially because it's gonna be this frog is really colorful. So I need to look details and reference of the color palette that I'm gonna use. 
because as example, I can I can use this one, but this is really really monochromatic, and I like these details. But with this frog, as example, Eddie, if we are talking about a small frog, these details we're gonna lose a lot of these details in the future. So I have to avoid them or at least make it simple, make it more readable. As I said before, thinking about the tattoo in the future. If we, if we make a illustration about this on paper, it's gonna be perfect because we can take advantage of all details and of the color. But if we put this a small frog in the tattoo, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a mess in, in a couple of years or even months. So this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the frogs, looking details, looking, as example, the, the pride of the eyes, like how many fingers. And and the other thing is the the context of the of the where yeah. So I'm looking for the context because with that we're gonna have more colors and we're going to complement the colors in the background. We're going to see how we're going to prepare the colors and how we're going to prepare the composition. Because if we look for frog, OK, we have this that is really popular. We look for frog tattoos. I don't really like like this as example these frogs that they don't have any 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 context of the placement they're just putting there like a sticker or like this so it's like I always try to play with the background and with the context of the of the animal or the element that I I will prepare and with that I will have a color reference of the color palette that I'm gonna I'm gonna use. And especially in this case, it's important to to have a contest because we need to make the difference between this size of frog and this size of frog. If we if we don't have uh, some point of reference, we can we can see and we can talk about the the difference of the of the sizes. So it's like that's why it's important to to make a composition uh, that we can that work. We can see the the scale of the of the of the element that we're gonna we're gonna prepare. So after having these these references and reference of the of the of the frogs and the placement that we're gonna we're gonna place the tattoo, I prepared this composition. I will I will show you since the beginning, and I'm still working on that. So I'm gonna. Work on that later. So this is the composition that I was preparing. I put this big flower that is like a regular size flower, but with that we have the comp uh, we we have how to compare the size of the frog and compare with the flower, right? So it's like it's like it's important to make the composition more I don't know more realistic because if not we will have like a a big frog. So it's like, this is the, the main composition. My idea is put the composition like this. It's gonna be something like this, like putting the, the, the flower in the back. And with that, the frog is gonna, is gonna be looking forward. Because if we put, if we put the flower here, we put the the frog in here. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be around the arm, but when you see when we see the inner part of the arm, the frog is gonna be looking is gonna be looking back, looking backward. So it's not gonna be it's not gonna look cool, right? It's gonna look weird. So this is how I decide to put the composition since the backward. To have the frog looking because the frog is the even if it's the small is the main element of this composition. So you start with this, and to 
with the idea of them having the the flower that simple as you can see in my in my tattoos i will show you a couple of my tattoos like like this this is a small bird so i put a i put the, the branch to make the, the to have a point of, of reference of the of the size of the of the bird and this one especially with this one I will, I will have this as example. I start with this one. The, the main idea of my client was having a reno and have a bird. But if we put all the, the big size of the reno, you can see that the, the eyes are super small. So after a couple of years, we can see, we, we can even see the eye because the eye will disappear. If we put all the reno and the, the eye will will be a dot, just a dot, and it's gonna disappear. And even with that, the bird, the bird will be something just like a, a, a small stain. So I changed the design and I prepared just the head to have enough space to, to put the bird with a regular size and, and the main thing that will be the head of the of the reno. Normally I like to play with the with the context as, as I told you, and I was preparing like these sunflowers when i use the reference and the context of the of the color and i play with the with the greens of the of the regular sunflower field to have something to put in, in the in the background and to have something to make like the composition uh, with a natural color palette let me show a couple more examples Like as example, we we'll show you this one. I always use for my color palette the reference of the element that I'm tattooing. When this one with this hummingbird, I was playing with the with the blue in the background to have the reference of the sky, right? To have the reference of the of the of the color palette of the sky, and like I have a little brown here, but it's turning little to red because that's the complement of green. So with that, we have a more natural and more interesting uh, color harmony. And I want to show you something really interesting. As example, with this one, if, I, if I'm doing a whale, I play with a lot of blues to have the reference of water. So because uh, one of the mistakes about watercolor that is my my tattoo style is people thinking that it's a vomit of colors and trying to put all the colors in the same in the same tattoo and it's is normally is not the, the the right way to do it so normally my recommendation is to think about the context of the tattoo that we're doing like this one i always when i'm doing birds i try to play with the with the blues and the green that are part of the of the context of the birds okay we can continue so we we are playing with this with this detail this is the natural the real color of the flower but i change it a little to make the frog pop up more so i put it like this color that's gonna be like a little orange but it's gonna flow more to the greens and i i decided to put some other branch uh, with green in the background that will be complement of the red that we have in the frog. So when I prepare a tattoo, so we have the, the first image, the composition that we prepared, and you can see the layers that my layers of the beginning. I start with the basic lines. I always turn down the opacity a little to make the tattoo more clear obviously and i start with basic lines like these are the basic lines of the element that with these basic lines we will do the element readable right with this we can see even with these simple lines we can see that it's a flower right and this is the other 
elements of background that are going to add to that. So it's going to be like this. I was looking, I will show you the reference picture of that. Oh yeah, we have it here. Like I'm playing with this. With this element, with this branch. So I decided to use this reference and I put it in the background. At the end of the tattoo, I will use these lines for for making green to complement the, the red and the, the color that I will use for the frog. So I start with the basic lines of the frog. So with this, we have like, at least we have a readable composition. This is really, really simple. The One of the things in, of the of tips of my, my style is like, I always try to avoid to be realistic. I always try to avoid to have something perfect. I always try to destroy the lines of the of the tattoos and it's right now it's part of my signature. It's like having something like, like this is a really good example. This is a heel tattoo. You can see like there's a lot of sketchy lines to, to destroy, but that you can see, you still can see the, the wind, the head and like the body and like you can see like the color is still solid. I only have a, complaints of critics about watercolor. People say like, yeah, the watercolor is not gonna last as other styles, but for me, uh, it's not about the style. You can be you can be a good tattoo artist or you can be even, you can be a good artist and it doesn't matter the style. It, it, the most important thing about tattooing is being solid and having a good application of the of the ink that you're gonna that you're using in the in the and understand how the skin is gonna work. Where's the placement and how you're gonna put the needle in each placement. But the most important thing at the end is being solid. It's not about the style. You can you can find a lot of black and gray tattoos that are really washy and it doesn't matter the style. It can be realism, it can be traditional, it can be um, black and gray. It doesn't matter. So so for me, the big recommendation and my my suggestion is like, being solid. That's the most important thing about, about a tattoo. And the contrast is like, as example for me that I do, I use a lot of colors and like, and I don't really respect the traditional color palette of the elements. The most important thing is use the contrast to, to show where it's in the background, which is in the layer of the back, which is in the main layer, uh, which is in the, the front, et cetera, et cetera. So with this, we have the, Two elements, they are readable. You can see, you can see something that you can see here with these leaves. Like you will read the tattoo like this. I, I'm gonna use it here. The first thing you will you see is that this is the point where you start and you will read the tattoo here. So we, we have the branching here. So this is the first element that you will see when you're seeing the tattoo. And the composition, it will be making like, this is gonna pop. The frog is gonna pop because it's like, a, you have all the air in this area, this empty air that we will use just with the greens of the, of the leaves and the little watercolor blue that I will use in the background, uh, really a color that I use that is the snowflakes. And with that, all the empty space and the soft and clear space that we have here, again, because we have a lot of lines, so all the empty space that we have here and all this air is gonna make the a really interesting point that make you see this a lot. So when you see this empty space and you see this complex element, so this is how you will read the tattoo. So this is something uh, interesting about the composition. How you're gonna make the tattoo look interesting and still readable? You can see here that here we have the flower with all the leaves in here in the, in the middle. You can still see the pop, even with the same color that we have here. This little blue that we have here makes the tattoo pops. Okay, so we have this part. 
we have the frog and we have the flower and we have the composition ready. And after that, I start adding more lines and more sketchy lines and playing with the textures. Like this is a really fast tattoo. And I play with the contrast, as I told you before, like with this, with this texture elements and with these textures to make like, really make it like a sketch, like a fast sketch of the tattoo that we are working on. So always this example here, we can have like a reference of the, so you know that we have these dark areas in here. So with this, when we off this layer, we can, we can, we can see all the background here, all the back, the black area that we have here, make this part, these little elements pop up more. Right, and this is a still a still a sketch. I used to use to the G pen, the G pen because it gives me a lot of freedom when I'm working on the, the sketchy lines. It's like all these lines, thick and thin lines, help me a lot for my my sketches. And it's really interesting because when I started doing like this, I didn't start because it was something like, okay, this style is gonna be popular or something. It's because because I'm I don't have patience. So I always I always try to do something and I, I want to see how it's gonna be how it's gonna be finished. So I always was working on this and I didn't I didn't work with with oils because I don't have the patience to wait until the layer is dry. So I always when I'm painting, I put a layer and I put another layer, and so that makes the paint drips, and that's becoming my style. Because, it, but it was something really natural, and not because I was looking for that. So I, 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 I realized like, okay, this will be interesting, and this will be interesting for my designs. I will try to do this fast because we only have one hour. I will try to cover all the details in this fast webinar. But you can see my word and you can prepare a couple of questions. And if not, at the end, we can, I will share my email and you can send me all the questions and everything that you want to know. So the other important thing about tattooing and about and the difference between tattoos and illustration and other things is like, for me, and this is a really personal opinion, we need black for 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 tattooing. We need to we need to have the black outline to make the tattoo last more and to make the tattoo pop up some more and contain the other colors. You know that there are colors that that disappear in the in the in the time. So if we if we have black, even with the, with the tattoo is getting old we can still see the, the colors. There was a couple of really interesting challenges a couple of years ago, about 10 years tattoo challenge or something like that. And it was about posting picture of your heel tattoos. That were really interesting because it, you can find a lot of people showing really bad tattoos and other people showing a really, really nice heel tattoos. The other important thing, and the other thing that you must do to explain to your client is like, is their responsibility to make a good healing process of the of the tattoo. Because it's, it's like, I think it's 50-50% of the, of the, the success of the, of a good tattoo. If you do a super good job, but client go to beach day after, you at the end you will have a really bad tattoo. The other tip that I can share with you is like don't look only for tattoos. Go to reference to reference outside tattooing. Look for pictures, for movies, for 
paintings, for photography, you can see a lot, of, you can have a lot of reference and that will help you to make a, something really different. That is, I think that's the most important thing about being an artist. It's not just to do something correct, it's just to do something that people will talk about. That is something that I will talk about, about that in my seminars because my style is really, really, I can see particular, but when, when I talk with people, it's like, you can like or dislike this thing, but at least you will remember it. This is pretty much. So with that, we have part of the composition. And so I, I added like the, the first layer, I call it basic lines. That is like the line that I show you at the beginning. The, the basic lines of the frog. So the sketch, that is the, the main part of my, my style to make the tattoo something different. This is extra lines. I always add a couple of layers with more texture. So even like at these points, I'm happy with the what I have right now. So, but I will I will add a couple more, a couple more to see what is happening. And if I don't like it, I still have the the first layer of the sketches. Oh my God, this is the time is running fast. So I will I will show you the other the other tool that I use are the dots. I will be for my. something that in tattoo we call pepper or dots. So this helps me also to, to give an extra texture to the design. And with us, we have extra background and ex extra contrast in here. I need if I need something I look for the I'm going to look for the other textures and see details that I can I can use as example the yellow that we will have here I will use it later where that's example I show you the, the the bright of the eyes and all those things I, I will use later for the for the design and something that people are waiting for is the how I use the colors so if, if you are new in this, uh, I will show you how I use like the like this is the the, the color palette that we develop with uh, Eternal Ink for watercolor. The specialty of this thing is like a thinner consistency of color that will be able to to mix it to create new colors. So I translate all these colors, all the the color of the inks to my color palette and I create my digital Brian Sanchez and color palette. So when I'm tattooing, I have this, I use the opal watercolor of the transparent watercolor when I'm gonna use background and I start playing with the, wait. Okay, here. Yeah, exactly. So obviously I use the watercolor, watercolor brushes. And normally I play with the, with the layers that at the end I will, I will change the color. So we have this orange that if I paint with this green, I know that this green is gonna be is gonna be here. It's gonna be my avocado. So with that, we, we understand the colors better. Normally, when I'm, I have this color wheel, I prepare this color set as a color wheel. So I have the, oops, here, no, I use like these blues for my uh, cold colors and the ruby red for my warm colors. So this is my, warm color palette and this is my cold color palette and this 
these inks are really special for me because it's something that I call transition colors. Something when we when people start doing watercolor, they add in a lot of water to the ink, trying to make it soft. But the bad thing is like they are taking taking up all the pigment. So that makes that the when the tattoo heals six months later, it's gonna be super washy because you are taking out the pigment and use you are you are putting just water with a touch of a couple drops of ink. With these inks, they are like something concentrate. So we, when you are when you are adding the colors, I will show you here, and they heal. As example here, we have this. This is the exhaust and this part. This is the exhaust. And when it heals, it's gonna still it's gonna it's gonna still be ink. And and I use like as I, as, I, as you see here, I mix the colors and I have a different blue in here. Or with this, I have a different, not just a red or the simple color that I have here, but I have a different color with the same root of colors. So with that, will be the transition more natural and more the color are gonna the colors will flow better. I'm sorry for my English, like I I need to practice. <laughs> so I was playing with the orange. So all these is. All the spaces in here that we I have in white, they will be ink. They will be the clear skin. So with that, when the tattoo heal, it's not gonna be oversaturated. It's just gonna be like a really natural transition between color and the clear skin. And the other thing I always want to do is like going outside the lines. That's like part of my statement to deny the traditional tattoo. When I start tattooing like this, all my colleagues and tattoo other tattooers, they say like, man, that's not right. Tattoo must be realistic and three-dimensional, et cetera, et cetera. And my, res my response was like, if you don't like my tattoos, you don't have to get my tattoos. Tattoos are for the people who like these this crazy things. That's the other thing. When people ask me, like, what's your style? It's like, I don't know, the crazy things from Brian. So here, so I will, I'm, I'm filling in really, really fast because I want to show you, like, at least the complement color between the, the greens and the red that we will have here. And see with put in this, you will see like we have where we have the other here. Like we have a red in the top and some kind of blues in the bottom. I will prepare an extra layer just to see how it's gonna flow. And the other thing is like we don't we don't have to do exactly the same the same color palette and the same trying to imitate reality as it is. I think you just can play and see how it's going and like make some changes. That's the good thing about digital art. You can make as many changes as you want. If you don't like like this, you just finish it and erase it and start over. Something is interesting happening here that we have just the frog, but we need to put some dark colors here. 
to really understand that the the frog is on the top of the of the of the lid, right? Without that, we only have something put it over there. So that's what I was talking about out there, about the importance of contrast in tattooing. I will add later some other contrast in here in color to show like like these areas are darker than these areas. So this is a super fast fast design. But you will see later how the tattoo will be finished. So with this, I'm preparing like just a single and fast color palette. For example, I didn't like the pink on the top here. All right, I will. Yeah, I will erase this part. I didn't like the pink in there. But with, it, with this dark red, we can we can see like this part. This whole area is darker than this area or the or the top of the leaves. And you with the blues that we have here, with the blues and the reds, like you can see like your eyes is here. But also you eyes, even if he's looking at here, you still can see that there's something, something is happening here. Something is happening here and the the bottom. Where we have like this. I like to play with multiply. And, and with that, you can see the blacks better. We have a little extra of where we have the reference of the colors in here. We have a little part of greens in here in the flower. So can I use that? So you can see here that I I have the lines, but I don't really exactly respect the lines how it are. I just using the dark and the light, the contrast of the between darks and and, and light colors. And I can add an extra layer in here. Oh, sorry. And if we know that we are close to the center here, this area must be darker than this area, right? So now remember that the arm should be here. Should be here. So we only will see this part in the back and the frog is gonna be here and the, so it's, it's gonna be like this, very much like this. So the, you have the plants in here and you can see a lot of details that's gonna be, the other part of the flower is gonna be in the inner part of the arm and the composition will be like this, something like this very much. And and normally when I see like the other tattoo that are gonna be here, I try to see how it's gonna complement 
or they complement with the other tattoo. And the other thing, as example, if, if I know that the, the leaf is gonna be here, I try to play and trying to avoid the elbow or areas that, as example here, or the inner part of the elbow that are more painful and are hard for healing and they are not important for the composition. It's not gonna be okay if I have the frog in here or even the frog is gonna be here or the frog is gonna be here because it's not, it's not gonna look okay and it's gonna be, it's probably gonna have a bad healing process. Gonna be, the healing process is gonna be, it's gonna be more difficult and, and it, it doesn't, look, you can see, it doesn't look really cool if we have the, the frog in there. So this is pretty much like my super fast webinar about doing a frog. <laughs> uh, I think we can have a, a space for some questions about this process. If you have any any questions, suggestions, or anything. Hey Brian, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of questions, a lot of very interesting questions. So thank you all of who said any of your doubts. Uh, or thoughts on the question panel. So um, let's start with uh, AK. He asked, do you have a favorite quick tip related to Clip Studio Paint that you find especially natural or convenient to use? Um, a quick tip? Yes. Yeah, I, I for me, like the, the better, the best uh, advice is like trying to make your process simple like right now normally i try to avoid many layers like this because of the of the webinar but i always try to keep like just three or four layers and going like having like your color palette as much simple as you want of you as you can that that will be my advice trying to keep your process simple even for not just for clip studio but for all the creative process and and the other the other small thing is like I use these colors for my digital work, for my paintings, and for my murals. So, if you have a, your process simple and the the color that you use as simple as you can, you can. It's gonna be more easy to translate this frog uh, from tattoo to a painting or to a big mural. Awesome. Uh, here's another one from Daniel Swiderski. Are there any special Clip Studio? paint features which helped you or that you like the most uh, preparing tattoo design? Yeah, the, the, this G-Pen, this G-Pen, I really, I really love it because it looks so natural for, for me. So as it, for me, this is like a, actually drawing. So for me, just explore with this brush um, with the watercolor brushes and the G-Pen and they will be, they will give you a lot of freedom. Mm -hmm. And regarding to colors, uh, Sinisa Pavlik asks, um, are RGB colors in palette more similar to real tattoo colors than uh, CMYK? I, I didn't understand. Could you repeat, please? If, if um, the color palettes uh, you, that you work on screen are similar uh, to what you will see on, on real skin, is oh, okay. Like yeah, or uh, or like printing. That's products? a really really good question because you can see here a lot of colors and a lot of bright colors, but especially we have a white background. When we are tattooing, we have to have focus of the skin factor. It's not the same the same thing since the beginning. It's not the same here that we have a white background then when we have uh, when we have the skin a skin tone of each people like it's different even it's different from that when people from us from asia from south america so we always need to think how the tattoo is gonna be and how it's gonna uh, yeah how it's gonna look in the in the skin tone so normally that's a really good question because yellow was example yellow is easy to disappear uh, after a couple of years. So normally when people is, go is going, the skin tone is being darker, I always try to avoid like these kind of colors. I always try to use the strongest colors and the, the contrast colors. And that's why I always keep uh, empty areas because 
when the tattoo is gonna heal and with tattoo, uh, after a couple of years, if we lose even the tone of some tattoo, some colors, the tattoo will still readable. But obviously, it's gonna change uh, since the skin, since the screen to the skin. It will they will change a, a, a little, but you need to explore your your skin tones and the tones that you like to use, and they will give you like a more natural transition between the screen and the skin yes um, and now that we're talking about that there there were a, a lot of questions regarding to different tones of uh, skin uh, so as you mentioned you avoid using some of, uh, of the colors uh, to not affect the tattoo result i i avoid what if you avoid some specific colors uh, regarding to some specific skin colors just yeah. to not mess with the result of the, of the yeah as example as example with dark skin with dark skin tones the first thing and then it's something that is really respectful and people trying to to people is used to scare about doing this suggestion it's like when when somebody has a dark skin the most wise thing and the most honest thing that you can say is is asking not to use color because the color is gonna disappear. So it's like, when, uh, the first thing I do when I receive the picture is like, see, okay, with this skin tone, I, we can see that we have, this skin tone is little, turn, it's turning a little to yellow. This is from South America. We have this, this kind of, the, this skin tone that is, you can see that is really, have a little touch of yellow. So I always try, with this one, I don't, I won't use a lot of yellow because it's gonna disappear. So I always, I will try to use as example, you can see like this, with these reds and these uh, kind of pinks, they're gonna have more contrast. So the most important thing is like, knowing the skin that you're gonna tattoo and we having that, you will prepare the composition and you will prepare the design thinking about that skin tone. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And Brian, here's another question from A. Hakameki. Hi, your art is absolutely amazing and it has been a wonderful to follow your work process. Thank you. I wanted to ask, when you start a new piece, where do you find inspiration for new ideas and new art? This is a really, really good question and thank you very much. It's like, as I told you before, normally I always try to, the first thing is like, see, what people is is doing and what people have. So you see, like we have like pretty much like these things that are the the something that we call like you see like this frog is the same as like this frog and they are pretty much the same. So the first the first thing I do is like looking for real pictures of the of the design that people is asking me for asking me for and playing with that and playing with the I have a good reference I will show you. It's Flickr. I like this picture. I like this page because they have a different different perspective of the element that we are doing. This is a professional photographer's uh, website. So we have a different references and something that is not the first thing that people use in, in Google. And the other, the other good uh, source of inspiration is like books illustration books and artist books i always try to go to reference of artists and i have a lot of books and normally I'm trying to do like just a quick uh, research of colors and references and lines and that's how i take something that is refresh my mind mm -hmm. and here my sagara asks uh, what was your most challenging piece and why? I think lately is something that people, maybe people have seen in my work is like this mural. I will show you. We're still looking at my screen, right? Mm -hmm. I will show you like this one. It was really, really challenging and it was a a big piece so i have a lot of study before start this painting and i start with this single thing i preparing like 
small uh, studies of how the perspective and the three-dimensional element will be. I prefer like this small, small scale of how the mural will be. And this is the final result. So this was a like, it was a six months process. So it was a really challenging thing, but it was something cool, <laughs> something cool to see. You can see the scale of the people there. So I like That's this amazing. project. Yeah, so, so yeah, as we mentioned, you are a muralist and also a tattoo. You, you are a multi, multi-task artist. So it's impressive how you projected the image into such a huge uh, canvas, which is basically this industry. And as you say, like one of the big things that we have here with the digital tools is like, that helped me a lot to prepare small and fast sketches about how the big mural will be. So I was preparing perspective and doing, trying to do something with digital tools. And that helps me a lot to prepare the final design. Mm -hmm. And regarding to that, Brian, uh, what's your workspace? Uh, do you use a uh, tablet, uh, notebook computer? Yeah, I use, I will, I, in fact, I will share you this that even for if you are interested in know, is like I use Wacom. And in inks, I use Eternal Ink, and this is the other products that I use. To, I use so even if people is interested in you know what the element that I use, but for me, Wacom is I use Wacom. I don't know, maybe fifteen years, ten years ago, since I was studying advertising. So it's like for me, Wacom is like it helps me a lot. And since I was a student studying that, I was start with. Uh, other softwares and when I find Clive Studio helps me a lot because this is really incredible for my sketch style. Mm -hmm. And here's another interesting question from Stefania Bianco. How does copyright work with the tattoos? For example, if a client brings you an artwork with which has been made by someone else and wants you and wants you tattoo to tattoo it without any modifications, what do you do? The, that's a really interesting question and a really interesting space for giving an advice. It's like the client is, is normally that the client bring you an idea that they found on internet because they are not creative and it's not their work to, to be creative. It's your work. You must be creative and you must to suggest something original to your clients. So for me, I always create my my designs, all my designs, and especially because now I have a particular style and a particular signature. When people come to me, they know what I'm doing. But as example for a traditional tattoo shop, when you are you have a lot of styles, the first thing is for ethical. I don't copy, or people must not copy the sign that they know that they are not from them, right? It's like but the option that you have, even if your clients say like, no, I want exactly like this. Your job is telling your client, let me give you something exclusive for you. Let me, let me give you something original. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that if you show to your client something original, instead of something that they are, they're found on internet, I'm pretty sure they, they will choose the original thing. I think everybody wants to have something original. So. That's my, my advice. Please do not copy tattoos. Even if you don't know the, the tattoo or you know the tattoo artist, it's like if you don't know who did that, you know that it's not yours. So trying to create something original. And people will find you and people will be looking for you for your original things. So that's that's my advice. You can you can find a lot of people copying your tattoos. I, I found a lot of people, a lot of copies of my tattoos, and I don't Right now, I don't, I don't really care. I always try. And, it's, it's sad for me and for my client because they're trying to have something original and people is copying it. But it's, it's, a, it's up to each tattoo artist. If you want to do to be something creative and some somebody who is a leader, or you want to copy mm -hmm. the tattoos that, that you have in the internet. Awesome. Uh, here's some more. <laughs> it's a funnier question. 
what are the most painful areas to get a tattoo? <laughs> this, this is something that clients ask. Yeah, normally like, and that's my every everyday question. Every everybody all the, all the time asking for for that thing. And normally the ribs area. Uh, people say that is the most painful area. I have a tattoo in my head, and it wasn't that painful. It was a really weird sensation, like feeling the needle in my in my bones, but it wasn't that painful. But the other thing I always suggest is like relax, don't fight with the pain, trying to to sleep well the night before. I always recommend my clients uh, sleep well the night before, use comfortable clothes, uh, still hydrated, and and choose the music that they want to. To listen so that will make the tattoo experience more more i would say more friendly okay I, I can say that and in, that if you as example if, if you don't like heavy metal and you if your your client doesn't like heavy metal try to not play heavy metal because <laughs> with the pain and with the music that you like it's like it's gonna be a bad experience so try to make the the best experience for your client mm -hmm. Okay, um, Brian, so uh, time run and we are almost finishing. One last question regarding to anyone who's willing to start into the tattooing and creating digital art for tattooing in Flip Studio Paint. What would be your advice? Could you repeat the question, please? What would be your advice for anyone who wants to start uh, creating tattoos through digital art like Flip Studio oh. Paint? The, yeah, this is a really, really good question. And the big advice that I can share with you is use digital tools, understanding they are just tools. Don't be dependent like like uh, of, of digital things. Still keep drawing on, on paper and using paint, uh, traditional paint process because that will make your brain still active. Because the the good things about this tool is like make your process really easy, but if you if you're not careful, it, it will be make you lazy, and if you don't have uh, energy and your and your laptop or your digital tools are without energy, you 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 have nothing. So trying to use the tools in the best for you, but is that doesn't don't stop using traditional tools. That's uh, something important to let you know. Still drawing, mm -hmm. so keep drawing. Yes, so thank you so much. With that thought, we are closing today's webinar. But before we go, we want to tell you that uh, for more information, learn more about Clip Studio Paint, visit our website, clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. And if you missed something or if you want to share the webinar, this webinar has been recorded and will be uploaded to our Clip Studio Paint channel and Graphics Lead channel on YouTube. And for more information about Brian, his projects, and to know more of his art, visit and follow Brian underscore Sanchez M on Instagram. So once again, thank you so much, Brian, for today's webinar. No, this was awesome. Thank you very much for for letting me be part of this I, i'm super happy and thank you very much to everybody who attended today and yeah please send me any any ask any question you have uh, please send me to my email or to my instagram and and thank you very much for looking at my work well thank you brian it was very insightful um webinar we learned a lot it was really fun to watch again thanks for uh, joining us stay tuned with our social media for more events so we'll see you in our next time. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much. See you soon. See you next time. See you next time. Rock bye and bye. Roll. <laughs> Rock bye. And roll. Bye.